button. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 22 of wow. Live on Two Wheels. What? Oh, we're still doing it. What? 22 times we've done this. We bro, we need to figure out a number. Like we need to celebrate. We need like to when we stop. <laughs> All right, we're out. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, <laughs> like a number to celebrate on. Uh, guys, welcome to your weekly live motorcycle show here on YouTube, and that eventually finds its way to podcast form. Live on two wheels. I'm Chase on two wheels. I got my buddy Bo with me as co-host. Uh, and today we're talking about regrets, Bo. I'm sure me and you got a lot of them, but unfortunately, we're talking about motorcycle-specific regrets. That narrows it down a little. That does narrow it down just a little bit. Um, so, guys, it should be a fun show. Uh, we we kind of wanted to take a break from so much motorcycle talk, like motorcycle-specific talk, so hopefully you guys enjoy this kind of... What, what what would you call this type of podcast episode? I know? mean, it's still it's still motorcycle related. No, it's always been motorcycle related, but it's not like we're not talking about. Hey, you know what? You guys know a bike sucks. Dash one. Well, so this kind of this kind of stuff is is like more like a biography of. Who we I are. think I think this is more podcast content. Yeah, honestly, it really if we're going to be honest, because I don't think this is something that I would really make a YouTube video. I about. mean, we I don't a lot of people that have been watching you for a while mm -hmm. know your history. You talk about it a lot, right? And anybody who's met or talked to me, like I'm an open book, and I'm I am very excited about my story mm -hmm. of of getting on a bike. So it's like, well, this will be a good opportunity for people to learn you a little better. Then <laughs> you gonna learn me? Oh, no, gonna learn Bo. Uh, <laughs> so guys, before we get started, uh, if you guys will do us a favor that are here in the chat, make sure to hit that like button. We love you guys a long time. Also, like we said, uh, this is also a podcast. So if you're watching this live, that's cool. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that like button. And if you guys, uh, you know, if you're out doing stuff, got a lot of stuff going on, you are able to just listen to this podcast. It is available on your favorite podcasting platforms, as long as one of those favorites is Spotify, Google Podcasts, or Apple Podcasts. One day, I'll dedicate the time to put it on more things. That day is not today, so we're only available on those three. But if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, we would love for you guys to drop us a review. I will read every single one of them. And they will make me feel better or worse about myself. So I really, I really hope you guys can find some time to go review them. Otherwise, I'll probably feel bad about myself. I just want to take uh, this moment. To, <laughs> take this moment to both. say hello to Moto Marvelous, Cali Katana, who's challenging you, by the way. Brett Brap and Downey, all up in the biz. Wait, what? What are you seeing? All this super, super chats here. Oh God! I see. You've I got I, it on your screen uh, right I, now. I it's usually the have the only <laughs> thing on your screen. It's bright. It's lit. No, no, no. That's what he's looking at. What do you mean? What? <laughs> you guys that are just listening, I highly recommend you watch. No, typically I have the Mila note up. So I, I I'm not used to uh, <laughs> having this on the screen, so I'm not even looking at it. Uh, oh my! That's God. that's oh awesome to have those guys in the chat. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go over to my Milo now that that I <laughs> so I can focus on what I'm doing. Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh um, so guys, before we get to the show, uh, what should we ask people to go over on Discord about? Because we forgot last episode to give away a fifty dollar Revzilla gift yeah, we did. card. Um, Which is our bad. We got we had a lot of stuff. Oh wait, that was the that was when I came back from L.A. I was half dead. No, we ain't yeah. giving nothing away for that. Yeah. I about died. Um, <laughs> Good lord. Oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't almost die. That's okay, an exaggeration. Uh, guys, go to our Discord. Uh, you can find the link in the description. Go to the Live on Two Wheels chat page and post one of your regrets. Post a, post your biggest regret as a motorcyclist, yeah. and uh, we'll pick one at the end of the show, and if we pick yours, we'll give you a RevZilla gift card for 50 bucks. You guys can grab some gloves or you know, 50 bucks off a helmet, something like that. Uh, we will give that out to you. Uh, link in the description for the Discord. Uh, and we'll do I'm that at the end of the show. I'm working on a way to get that to play with our bots, too, so that will make it a lot easier. To yeah. yeah if we've you got... ever post anything, I'm going to I'm gonna set it up to... Uh, where it'll automatically pull it if you just use like a certain command or something like that. I'll I'll, right. I'll work on that. I've got a lot of stuff to do the Discord. So yeah, we're uh, we're on the that early stage of like ramping up Discord. Uh, it's been going really cool thus far. Like we've been talking about it in first rides, and like we're seeing way more people come into there. And Bro, I cannot it's wait. really cool to watch the community mm -hmm. of Discord grow like 
at this current rate. Because typically, you know, the people that have been in there, been there for a while, but now we're like going to start bringing in people and stuff like that. Well, it's going to be real cool when we get to the. Um <laughs> we the get web, to the final form, like the, the website and all that stuff. And yeah. It's like once we get to that point, we can we can dedicate a lot more time to it. Right. And like for you guys that don't know, uh, Rec Pack Revo. Sorry to interrupt you, Bo. Um, <laughs> but uh, we have uh, we've been working on a website for months now. Not us, but we're you know hiring it out. And uh, we've got some really cool plans. So once that website gets done, we'll let you guys know. But it's going to, like, intermingle with Discord and our Wreck Bike Rebuild show and all a lot of the stuff that we're doing. So we have uh, a lot of cool stuff going on. Um, before we get to – wait, what? No, I was just – I was reading a message from Danny. Oh, God. Is he texting I me? I cannot show it on stream. <laughs> okay, he didn't I text me. You. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrifying. Um, <laughs> so uh, before we get into the topic, housekeeping. You've been in the cave this week, bud. You've been editing away. Yeah. How's things going on your end? I mean, we have me and you haven't gotten to talk at all today because we, well, the guys and I, were out filming a super secret series, which I'm excited for. Have you looked at the footage that we got today? Yes, I looked at some of it, it's bro. Really good. We we thought we were gonna film two episodes of this series today. And we ended up filming barely one, yeah. but the footage, So I think it looks good. The last week has been interesting because we are fine-tuning our pre-production process to be as oiled as every other part of it. And so I have had a large weight pulled off of me because like, the biggest problems that we have right now left are pre-production. Yeah. And so... like. We're starting to get in that mindset, and things are getting like, so, like, I mean, you would be able to speak on it more than I would, but like the editing process, the, all that stuff has, yeah. it's kind of found its. I feel like we're so. I feel like we're getting really close to a stage where everybody has hyper specific roles, right? Because like up until now, you know, you guys have probably seen if you've been subscribed to the channel for long enough. I've been kind of growing the team over the last four years. Mm -hmm. But this whole time, you know, one day somebody's doing this, the next day somebody's doing something else, even me. So what's happening is my roles are just melting away, <laughs> and everybody else's roles are like, you are literally becoming the one specific thing. You are going to become this one specific thing. So it's kind of been pretty neat to watch this whole thing because, like, hey, the less I got to do, the better. Well, I feel like um, I feel like we're at that spot, though. We're like, getting close. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> Like, I pull it back the curtain a little bit. Like, there are very few things that you and I have to have a discussion about now once the video is finished. It's like what we call zhuzhing it up, you know, yeah. like add, add here or like hey, something's a little off here. Right. But we found that groove in our production and our post production. So, right. Sit, also, sitting in the cave with nobody around, with no, wearing no pants, just editing videos all day. <laughs> That's it. Uh, so I, I want to give a sh like. Here's the thing I'm super proud about. Recently, <clears throat> you know, the last week or so, yeah. I feel like, and you guys have been watching all the live on two wheel shows. Go back a month or so, yeah. maybe two months. Uh, me and Bo said something about we have a, I forget what we called it. We said a a channel restructuring plan. Yeah. Because you guys know, channel got hacked and like the. Whatever happened happened to the channel, and it ruined it for a while. Yeah, it was it was not a good spot. I would say that after that plan that we put in place, and you know, we said it on the show, We've uh, met or exceeded expectations. We have we are about ninety to ninety five percent of the channel back running in good form. It's not super optimal. It's not like the best it's ever been, but the fact that we're almost back to where it was, and it's be I feel like it's because of. We put a plan in place. We've been knocking through that plan religiously. Yeah. And we're starting to see the results. And it's so, I was telling Bo this the other day, guys. It's so cool for you to sit down and be like, all right, stuff is messed up. We need to fix it. We've yeah. been doing this long enough. We should know how to fix it. Let's yeah. make a plan. You make the plan and do the plan. And it actually works. It is, I mean, it's also relieving because we all get no to continue doing cool one. jobs. Yeah. <laughs> we love doing what we do. So we want to keep doing it. <clears throat> Uh, and you guys have been responding phenomenally to the stuff we've been doing of the content over on YouTube and, you know, here on the show. Uh, so shout out to y'all for, you know, just really, really killing it lately. We massively appreciate it. 
Um, I love you. Me yeah, man. love you guys a long time. Uh, and we've got, and bro, we're just starting. We got no regards. <laughs> not even we one. Got, we got such cool stuff going on. Yep. Um, anyway, uh, anything else? We got, you know, we've been doing a lot of a lot of filming lately, as per usual. We've got a really fancy first. Start. We have we have what might be the first time I've done a first ride for no reason other than the bike looked cool. Yeah. Tomorrow's first ride. I mean, we got a bunch of stuff coming down the pipeline. We, we ain't talking about right now. Yeah, we we're not quite able to. But talk like, about that next. shit's getting real. Mm-hmm. Shit is getting real, real. Yeah, it's a good time. Uh, so, guys, let's talk about regrets. <laughs> Enough of happy Fucking stuff. Pro segue, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking a. Enough talking about enjoyable stuff. Um, also, we could say this: uh, if you guys want to help support the show, uh, there's no sponsor for this episode, so we'll just do a little self promotion. Uh, supporting us over on Wreck Bike Rebuild, patreoncom chase on to us how to get there. Uh, you guys can win motorcycles, and it super supports what we do here. Alternatively, if you guys are grabbing gear. I believe we have it in the description of the live show. If you guys use our RevZilla affiliate link, that helps us indirectly. You guys don't pay any more for gear. We get a little cut of it. So uh, if you guys are grabbing gear from RevZilla, uh, we would love for you guys to just click on that link. Once you click on that link, you can buy any gear. It actually helps the show out a lot. Um, that's our little sponsor plug, you know, help us pay for stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Bo, how long have you been riding? So just so we can get a gauge for the people that don't aren't familiar with how long we've been riding, because like people's regrets, I feel like motorcycle wise, we're, we're not talking about life regrets, guys. Uh, yeah, because that's we're, a good literally, story. we're literally just talking about motorcycle <laughs> what are you regrets. Doing for the next two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not being paid as a therapist. We're not going through the regrets you have in life. Uh, so I, I feel like to describe motorcycle regrets, we should probably kind of give a brief over how long we've been riding set the baseline yeah because like it i feel like somebody that's been riding for a year's regrets are going to be entirely different from somebody who's yeah. been riding their entire life you know they've ridden hundreds of motorcycles and stuff 100%. so um i'll give mine after you so yeah. uh, uh the tldr yeah. version um i rode dirt bikes as a kid teenager um I, I moved out of my house pretty early, mm-hmm. um, so I worked full time jobs from seventeen until right. now. <laughs> um, at eighteen, my dirt bike got stolen off the back of my trailer, which was like bike locked, triple bike locked, and at, and it got stolen. Yeah, it got stolen. And at eighteen, working like a job that pays enough to pay the bills, right? And put yeah. a little gas in in the bikes. Right. I was just like, well, I guess I don't ever ride motorcycles again. So I didn't ride for right. ages. Okay. And then I'd say probably at 29, 30, mm-hmm. um, the truck I had bought, it was in 2013, I remember, because it blew up, like literally. Um, the truck died. and I Story for another day. <laughs> another day. I, I worked five miles away. Okay. From where I lived, it was me and Marley, and we lived off of Roswell Road, right across from the Prada. Oh, where you? Okay, yeah. And so I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll just get like a scooter, super economical, gas wise, mm-hmm. and I can just like you know, sidewalks, whatever. Right. Cool. And th- like three months later, I was like, well, now I want to get back on bikes. So the scooter kind of like lit that it, again. Like, yeah, it like reminded me, like, oh yeah, you used to do this. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I never rode on the street. I I nicked my uh, my stepdad's uh, bike like when they weren't around. Use the word borrowed because when you say nicked, it's like yeah. you're, you're a terrible person. You stole it. Well, you know, <laughs> we're not getting into that. Okay, this is not, not a bow therapy, therapy session. <laughs> so I I would like I would just like snag his bike out of the garage when they weren't around and whatnot, and enjoy riding it around the neighborhood as, as like a, a you know a fifteen year old. But like right. I'd never really ridden on the street as like a actual motorcyclist until right. I decided to get my M certification. And when was that? I uh, was. I had to. I had to be thirty. It was. It was. Jeez, I mean that was two thousand thirteen, two thousand fourteen. So like eightish years you have Something under like your belt yeah. riding. Okay. Um, and since then it's been you know different bikes and you've you're progressed to the point where now you own a bolt mm-hmm. and you are preemptively looking for your next cruiser style motorcycle 
Yes, I am. Uh, and it, a conversation for another day. <laughs> um, well, Mo- Moto Marvelous was asking me a question earlier. Oh, feel free to ask it, and I'll or answer it, and I'll he uh, like, answer him. He was like, Chief or Sports Dressed? And I'm like, Oh, that's neither. a- Neither. Oh, and oh, okay, and end it there. I like yeah, it. Yeah, buddy. Um, okay, so uh, a lot of you guys have, you know, a lot of y'all have followed me for a while. Uh, I've been riding for 11-ish years, started on an SV650, had never ridden a, or driven a manual car, ridden a motorcycle. Bro, I even bought a bicycle and rode it to work in class, you know, in preparation because were, I had got my- You were my, one of those fixie guys, weren't you? Yep. <laughs> riding in downtown, absolutely. I'm so sorry about that. Um, and I I felt so cool doing it. I'm not even. <laughs> did you tuck lie. your little your little pant leg into your sock? I did. <laughs> you jerk. I watched so many YouTube videos about how to how to do cool shit on fixie bikes. Anyway, uh, so uh, it got got my job uh while I you know had other jobs. I literally had a job n- for nothing but to save up for a motorcycle. Yeah. Eventually saved up enough, bought my motorcycle. Um, got an SV650. I think it was a 2005. Then it was SV650, R6, R6, WR250, R6, WR250, R6. Things were getting stolen. Um, <laughs> R6 went to, uh, gave it away for a wreck bike rebuild season, got a Daytona 675 that I had been borrowing from Triumph. Uh, then I sold that. Then only had the WR for a, almost a year. It was only the WR. Um, that was the dark ages of C2Dub. And then, uh, you know, when then we're here. And I have my MT10 and my WR250 now, yeah. so I've you know I've we stayed got some in, years that. under us. We've got some years under us for sure. To be and, and to clarify, for like <clears throat> four four of those years, mm-hmm. that was my only mode of transportation. I every I'm like I didn't own when I when that truck blew up. Mm-hmm. That's it. I yeah. I still don't own a car. The car I have is my mother's right now, right. and once the estate clears, that's going back. Right. So, like, <laughs> I won't own a car again. But, like, I haven't owned a car since 2013, and for, like, four or five years, I would I only had the bike. And then it was after that that I um, started borrowing, like, Marley's car for, like, a day, like, a month. Right. So I could, like, run errands. And then when uh, my stepfather got into his accident and can't ride anymore right. and drive anymore and then i took his truck and started fixing it up thinking i was gonna buy it right so it's like for a very large portion of that time that's all i did well so that'd be an interesting conversation to have uh we won't have it today but you know heather and i have had just the jeep for uh shit like probably five or six years honestly we've been rocking one car and the jeep's paid off and everything so I, it would be an interesting conversation to like we've both been in a position where you know we're we have wives, so we have two people in the household. We all have jobs. <laughs> both of our wives own their own business. That, uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Is required to use and, the car, right? So yeah. it it's it would be an interesting conversation of can you have just one car and a motorcycle? Because motorcycles make having only one car like suddenly super doable. You know what I mean? Because like I'll I'll ride through anything, but. Um, so I think the cool thing to do is maybe we go back and forth with some of the we've kind of like mm-hmm. jotted down some of the regrets uh, we've had, you know, looking back where we got to now um, and kind of just work through those. We've also got some cool like towards the end of the show, uh, I posted on the community page on YouTube mm-hmm. and got some responses. There's some good ones from I d- people. Don't look ahead. I'm not. I'm not. You are looking right at I'm it. I'm not looking. Hold I on, can hold see on, your hold screen. On, hold on. Look, 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 look. I fixed it. I fixed it. <laughs> okay. Um, so we'll go back and forth, and then maybe later in the show we can start pulling from YouTube and see what – because, like, we're only two guys, you know? Yeah. I mean, the show is us just kind of chit-chat and having conversations around motorcycles, uh, but it'd be interesting to see what other people had. So, Bo, what's, uh, what's one of the regrets you have, bud? As uh, motorcycle regrets, again, please don't get into uh, <laughs> all of your regrets. I, I, I have one major – regret starting I, off with a big one okay I would, say, I would say it's it's a it's a it's a dead tie between my two biggest regrets uh-huh um i wish i hadn't quit riding dirt i wish i'd gotten back into it again okay uh just because i loved it so just to be clear you're saying when the bike got stolen i stopped riding because i couldn't afford to get another bike so you wish at that point you would have st- found a way found a way yeah, okay. made something work. My buddy Paul, uh, uh, the, you know, like he was really good about 
like making sure everything's taken care of and forcing himself to find a way to mm-hmm. also do the things he really enjoyed. Right. And I didn't learn that lesson until much later in life. Right. Um, so I wish I wish I hadn't stopped riding the dirt because I, I just had so much fun doing it. And it was one of those things where I always did it with, like, my buds. Like, there was, like, four or five of us. We'd just grab our dirt so, bikes and go hit, you know, the trails right. out in my hometown. So. You can uh, correct me if I'm wrong with this because I've never really been into riding dirt. Like, yeah. me and Yummy would, like, mess around with the WRs yeah. on sometimes on the Adventure Series stuff. But I feel like, you know, outside looking in, I feel like dirt riding, very similar to Grom riding. Yeah. It's by yourself. I mean, you can do it. But... If you're gonna do it, you need to have people to do it with, because yeah. the the fun factor is just exponential, yeah. exponentially. Larger. You can enjoy it by yourself, and I did quite often, just getting lost and stuff on the trails. Right. Um, this is before, like I I grew up partially in New York and then partially in uh, Douglasville, mm-hmm. and it was before because I'm almost forty. It was before like the mall and all that shit was built up, so it was just empty woods that people would carve trails in and so we get lost out there but like it does exponentially get more fun the more people they have and we rode 125s Wise, uh, at a YZF my first bike was a 96 YZ 125 right and the thing I loved about it was you could just ring the living shit out of it it had two speeds not moving it just and going. just full throttle right so like that was that was like kind of the side regret but my biggest um, regret was when I decided to get into street riding, mm-hmm. not doing my fucking research. I spent what, like a year and a half, yeah, and you know, ten thousand dollars, all in taxes and everything, right, on a bike that did not suit me. And I did. You're talking about the a, FC6R? Yeah, I had fun. W- w- the experiences were fun, right? Because <clears throat> I like first group ride was two weeks after I got it right. at the Lanier meetup. Like a month after that, I'm on the tail of the dragon with Downey and Matt and all them. Yeah. And we had a blast. All those meetups, all that stuff, the experiences were great. I never really got to enjoy that bike because it wasn't my style. And I didn't know that because I didn't do the proper research. And I wasted what I see as valuable time and money yeah. on something that was not for me. I I now know what kind of rider I am. So I So if you were to go back and... You know, if you could give your old self some pointers, would it have been like go straight to the bolt or would you have told yourself don't go on any specific motorcycles, do everything you can to do testing? Yeah, I would have done I would have done more like a thorough job of finding out what kind of rider I wanted to be for street riding. Right. Because that would have saved me a lot more time and money. Do you think it was valuable though that you were on the FC six R that because like do you think Yes, I just wish I hadn't spent <laughs> that money. This is what it basically what it boils down to because like it was a year of it. Yeah. And I we went to the mountains, you and I specifically, and that's pretty much the only time I went to the mountains was when we would go. Mm-hmm. I mean like once every once in a while. Yeah. And so it was like I it, the rest of the time. I'm in, I live ITP, so I'm in the center of the city. Right. All of my riding is street mobbing. Yeah. That's, I mean... I mean, it's not a bad bike for that. It's not a bad bike for you it. Know, it but if like, you guys don't know, the FC6R equivalent would be an MT-07 right now. Yeah. Like, back in the day, that was the closest to an it MT-07. Was, it's an R6 engine that was detuned, detuned and put in an upright More torque, platform. less horsepower. Right. Than, than it was that kind of flip. And it was a standard handlebar situation. So honestly, for, if you want the sportier side, that's the perfect bike. But you wanted the mob and vibe yeah. more than that. Yeah. So like, I may have ended up on a dual sport. Yeah. Or like, you know, um, a standard, or or right. even like a, a mid controlled cruiser or something like that. Something with low end gruntiness. Right. Lots of fun and lots of noise. Like that's the kind of rider I am. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, it's it's so cool that you could. I mean, if you're asking me for the type of riding and the type of location you were in, you had a phenomenal motorcycle. So it's really interesting that you. I can, felt like I never used it the way it was intended. Well, I mean, I'm like, going that's relative, to work and you know? I'm just like, 
Well, so to me, though, looking back on that, looking where I am now, like you see how much I you like in editing the videos, I think you can see how much I enjoy the MT-07 and the MT series and or hell with the MT style motorcycles. Granted, a lot of that is like my back and stuff like that. So I, I can't really ride a super sport like cruisers. I want to. Huh? It's the other reason I love cruisers. Oh, yeah. Dude. Um, so it's interesting that, you know, if if I were to go back in time and pick a bike for you, like I would have probably picked something like that. If, you, if for that area, not knowing the type of like vibe you were looking yeah. for with bikes. Um, but that's I mean, interesting. It was, a good, you know? it was a good experience that I know that it was just like, there was a lot. I mean, in that year I put like 28,000 on that bike. 28,000 miles. <laughs> I went, I went all the way out to Tennessee and. and oh, like, okay. So you weren't just, okay. That's not I, like in town. 28,000 miles. No, no, no. I mean, I'd say probably about half of that is it was in town. But, like, I did a lot. That's a lot of miles. I did a lot of riding on that bike. Yeah. And very seldomly was it the kind of riding that I, I it felt natural at, which was yeah. slightly more technical, not super technical. Yeah. I don't I don't think I – I don't know if I've ever ridden the FC6R. I might have, like, really early on in my first ride the stuff. Fun bikes. They look cool. Yeah, and, I, like, I don't remember what like because you're t when you say like detuned R six, uh, I'm didn't like do a hmm. mullet check. Oh, sorry, mullet check. Uh, we have mullet still going strong, guys. Don't worry, it's uh still killing. And I think uh, <laughs> the last episode, Heather said like she's super mullet game. Team, so yeah, it, team mullet. It looks like we're. I don't know. Can you see it in the camera? Can you I mean, see a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. It's it might be hard to see. Mullet's right. still there. So, don't worry, guys. We're so, still killing it. So what about you? Like if you had to like take the top one, right? Your biggest um, regret. So the way I kind of looked at this when I, you know, we were making our notes this week. Um, oh, Heather's in the chat. Yeah, Heather had a, a client call at five, so she was worried she wasn't going to make it in, but it looks like she's in there. Yay, Aww. hey babe. Um, so the way I kind of look at this, the way I have to look at this, you know, story arc that is my motorcycle career, um, I kind of look at it from beginning to end. So my first regret, you know, in thinking chronologically, uh, I started on an SV650. The, I, I started that too, <laughs> um, which honestly, I see those every now and then, and I'm like, dude, that's not a bad it's bike. Not. I would legitimately be okay with buying an SV6. Uh, I'd, I'd I'd be okay with buying an SV1000 because I'm capable now. But um, I started on a yellow SV650S. It it was the S or yes, I think it was the S because the S was like the half fairing, so the engine was exposed, but it had this like fairing up front. It was yellow. I had a yellow Mustang at the time. I was a douche clearly because i was like i'm gonna have yellow everything um i love the shit out of that bike but when i look back on it and this is something i harp on a lot in the videos you know if i'm doing a first ride on something like an r3 or something like that i i tell people a lot especially now that the starter bikes starter bikes r3 ninja 400 like you like those two alone i think anybody can jump on those and have a good time uh, back in the day, we didn't have those, but we did have a Ninja 250. Uh, I think that I got into a, a lot of issues with my motorcycle because I told you guys when I started riding, I had no idea how to ride. I didn't know how to shift. I didn't know what a clutch was. I knew that it was some weird thing. Because you learned. On camera. That, that's, so for you guys that don't know, the the beginning of my channel the chase on two or what was chase in 3d channel which is the channel i had before chase on two wheels um that's another long story uh i started the channel because i wanted to i, I knew that you know i was gonna i had always wanted to ride and i finally was in an opportunity in my life that i could actually take it on now uh so i was like you know what would be funny if in a few years i look back at all these videos of me learning how to ride once I know how to ride, I thought it would be hilarious to be like, wow, bro, you suck. Uh, so that was the whole point. Uh, and there was a couple, there's probably honestly like 10 people doing moto vlogging at that time. So I was like, hey, these guys ride around and listen to, or talk to themselves. So I'll do that, but I'll, you know, from the get go learn. So we can go all the way back to Chase on Chase on 3D and like watch me learn how to ride a motorcycle. And, uh, you know, I, I honestly think had I started on a Ninja 250, I probably would have had far less wrecks and problems 
had I started on that motorcycle because it would have physically halted me from doing really stupid stuff. You can still do stupid stuff on a Ninja 250. Do not get me wrong. But you've got a, you've got a speed limit cap. Oh, somebody just called you out, by the way. Chase Loop 3D. Chase, it's, it is what it is, man. It was back in the day. Um, I went to school for 3D design, so uh, that's why I thought I was fancy. Um, so I think if I would have started on something more approachable and something more limiting, intentionally limiting, I honestly think I would have gotten less wrecks, and I think I would have – I honestly think if I would have done that at this point in time, I would be a better rider, honestly. Because I would have been forced to, if I wanted to go faster, I would have had to learn to go faster. It's not as easy as pulling the throttle in or getting another gear and, and you know shifting up and going faster. Because, uh, like, bro, I, I had a one day up in the mountains. I started oh, – I'll get into the mountains thing. That, that's kind of another thing. I wish I had so started like, on a 250 instead so of a like 650. The, the interesting thing uh, thing to think about with that is that, like, if you had started on a, a, a more – uh, beginner focused machine mm -hmm. then it would have been a longer transition into upgrading and by that time you will have spent enough time on the bike to find out what kind of rider you are you probably would have steered clear of like straight race super sports right you know what i mean well, so the you would have you would have you would have probably leaned more into like okay i know what this feels like yeah and i like i like the kind of sporty feel yeah I mean, who's who's to know? Because you know, if I your, your back may actually not be fucked up right now. That's because true. Of it. Damn you know it. I mean? <laughs> um, and to be clear, I did try to buy a Ninja 250, but because uh, like it, uh, I'm almost embarrassed to say, but at the mm -hmm. time, I can still remember it honestly. There at the time, there was a black and dark maroon Ninja 250 with tribal graphics. Ugh. That. I know. Trust me. <laughs> that at the time was my dream motorcycle. That is the one I wanted to start on. I could not find one available when I, you know, was financially able to to grab one. The SV650 was the only bike that I was like, well, it's a little more power. It's a lot more power, uh, <clears throat> but I can afford it, and it's it's for sale used at you know X dealership. Let's let's do this thing. So interesting to think about because I I didn't even rem I was I wasn't thinking of that right now mm -hmm. until you said that because like the the bolt it was like when I found out what kind of rider I, I wanted to be I wanted a more standard kind right. of approach. The only reason that I landed on the bolt is because the Iron Eight Eight Three was anemic comparatively. Okay, and Harley. At that point, I was financing the bike, right? Regardless of what I did, and Harley's payment was too high, so I couldn't get the bike that I was looking at. <laughs> I want this one, but I can't afford it. Damn it! <laughs> yeah, and so the, the bolt was the next the next step, and that thing was like a sixteen hundred cc. Yeah, like it would have been a large jump in yeah. torque than what I was used to, but and, and a totally different body position too. Yeah. So you'd have been like in a really weird spot. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'll go into, I'll go into my mountain stuff at a, at a later one. So what's, uh, your bike getting nicked and learning what type of riding you like doing the most early on, well, earlier yeah. was your other two. So what's your, what's your next regret that you have looking back? I mean, <clears throat> there are plenty of opportunities that I had that, uh, presented themselves that I didn't take. Mm -hmm. Um, for instance, what? Like going on trips and long rides and stuff like Motorcycle that. Motorcycle related trips. Yeah, and like just like nah, I I wish I had taken more advantage of that because like I was at a point in my life where like my career was starting to take kind of most of the focus off. Right. So there's a lot a large period. I'd been working IT for like 15 years before here, and it it was mostly just kind of day to day. Like regular ass job. It wasn't until about that same time that the career started, the trajectory started going up, right. and I started moving my way very quickly. Right. So it was like one of those things where, like, I had to, I had to, I couldn't divert my focus between the two. I had to focus on one or the other. I was at that time. I had started making videos, mm -hmm. like on my channel. There's like, I don't know, 
20 to 30 videos that I just have on private right now because I'm just like, eh, you know, whatever. I can watch them if I want. But it's right. like, like I had started doing that. I started writing more and I started like going on longer trips. And then so I stopped doing that to focus on my career. Right. And then, you know, I we did the web series for a while. And so I started focusing on it because that was something I could do that didn't require the resources and time right. that going on a long trip would. So I was like, yeah, I can manage that. So me and my buddies did the D&D web series for like forever. Right. And it just kind of, I'd, I'd go on the weekend or, you know, if I'd had some vacation, I might take like a three day and go and travel. Right. But then the bike became my, my tool for getting to those places instead of, like the actual experience yeah right. and i think that's a big regret because i like that job sucked the life out of me and now, job yeah now looking back on it i'm just like what a wasted opportunity yeah like there are a lot of people who will say you don't live your life with regrets and i want to clarify i agree to a certain extent mm -hmm. you you're human beings you're going to regret stuff like that's right. you you can't not live your life's without regrets you always look back at something and i wish i had done that where it becomes problematic for me at least personally is if you live by your regrets if that's what's forcing everything you do is that you just are trying to avoid having regrets yeah, you're living in the past or okay. you're like obsessing over like you can i can look at my and you know i compartmentalize fairly well i'm just like i can look at the mistakes i made or the things i'd wish i had done differently and go right. okay i got that cataloged now yeah. i know that if i'm presented with something like that again that I can make a different decision and it can turn out okay. The, the IT job, I'm just like, that, uh, that sucked all of that potential time I had to have life experiences, which I now know to be vastly more important right. than a nine to five working for somebody else, right. making them billions of dollars. Like, you know what I mean? That's, so that's an interesting conversation that we could maybe get into it another time. But I think a lot of people have that where they do start writing when their career is very early and they necessarily don't yeah. have a lot of money to, to ride. And then as their career trajectory starts taking a, a up climb, you suddenly see the, the career do better and the motorcycling be less. And yeah. I think a lot of people drop out of motorcycling because of that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we can talk about that. It, be time it, became, it became, it became a, a, a tool in my, in my everyday living instead of, something that I am using to experience life. Yeah. I'm using it so that life can like kind of take over my shit. And Do you think that correlated with like you you were on a motorcycle that wasn't your like your one? Do you think had you got on the bolt earlier uh, and you realized what riding like cuz you know when everybody finds that riding that clicks with them it it like that's when writing really becomes a thing. I think. Um, do you think if you'd have gotten on the boat earlier, would you have been more apt to do those trips and uh, take advantage of those opportunities when they presented themselves during your IT job? I honestly think if if I had, of course, hindsight being twenty twenty, if I knew then what I know now, mm -hmm. um, I would say that one. I would have not given up on my own personal channel right. like I did. Uh, links in the description down below. <laughs> oh, Lord. Good luck on that one, guys. Um, uh, I would have probably – that would probably be that moment where I go, okay, this can be – because it was about that time I started seeing, like, the curtain being pulled back on corporate life. Oh, uh, okay. Because my whole life I was told, your dreams are dumb, get a real job. And so, like, the hobbies became a thing that I would fit into everything else. Around that time, when I was, like, riding, I had the Bolt. I was riding a lot. Right. I was meeting a lot of new cool people. It was about that time when I started getting, like, the the fog and the haze was starting to, you know, spread and clear. And I was seeing that job for what it really was and right. what kind of person I was becoming because of it. Mm -hmm. And so, I think at that point, that would have been that turning point where I'm like, no, just keep going on the what you're doing. Fuck this place. Yeah. I, I honestly think that because of that and because of the trajectory that all my personal stuff was going, that uh, the channel would probably be a sustainable option at this point yeah. for me. If I Because that, that was no, early on. Yeah. Yeah, so you would have been able to get in that like early float period. Yeah. It would have um, been interesting. 
Yeah, it would have been interesting. I do want to clarify because I, I very much agree with what you're saying, and uh, I, I, I say this, I religiously think this. I am very happy with where I am. So everything I'm saying today is a – it would have been interesting if. It was a but reflection. But I would not change a single thing about yeah. my entire life because, like, the, the stuff we get to do every single day right now, you know, the the wife I have, the life I have, like, bro. I, I, if anybody that knows my personal story knows what kind of absolute monstrous shit show pretty much my entire life from the age of nine has been. Yeah. But zero parts of it would I change. I the the things that I regret and the things I wish had not happened, like, doesn't change. Like that tra- that trajectory should have happened because that's why yeah. I am who I am as a person right. because of all that stuff. So when I look back on it, I was like, oh, I wish I had ride, ridden dirt. That just means I'd be really awesome at riding dirt right now. <laughs> right. Like that's all that means. It doesn't change me as a person. But like, I definitely look back and I go, yeah. Well, wouldn't it be awesome if I could just like, or, or just like, I would like to see the episode of my life if this happened. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, fun fact: we've only got 19 minutes left. What? I know. I just saw right. somebody say 20 minutes. Good so, Lord. okay. So, I'm, wow. Let's, let's do the community thing. No, no, no. We gotta, we gotta get through a couple more. We'll, all right, last 10 minutes, we will do nothing but. So we can't elaborate as much. So okay. thank you, Trevor. I saw oh, 20 Lord. minutes in the like. I saw it in the corner of my eye, and I'm like, 20 yeah. minutes. What's Bro, that? We need to add another oh, my. 30 minutes to the show. We need to work on that. Right. Um, okay, so the next thing that I want to hit the of mind that I think is really important for people to hear from the get go. Like, literally from the step go, I took that little SV650, I took that bitch to the mountains, and I started riding with people who I had no business riding with. It would have been fine if I rode with them, and I was of the mindset of, like, it's okay, they'll go faster than you, they'll catch up. These were super nice people. These were much older guys that were like, hey, man, don't worry about keeping up. We're going to be at the top of the mountain. Bro, 30 days into riding... Literally, like, 30 days ago, I didn't know how to use a clutch. In 30 days, I was in the mountains that I still ride in today. Riding with, like, dudes that had been riding for longer than I was alive. Yeah, that's a common one on a lot of people. Yeah. So here, so I, I used to ride with a guy who, has, it, this is probably what messed my head up. He had a yellow SV650. He had the one with fairings. I had the yellow SV650 without fairings. So I thought to myself, Kids, please do not think this. Yeah, it is totally don't, wrong. Don't do this. I saw this guy who is an incredible rider. If he can do it, surely I can do it. <laughs> Bad idea. Because my thought process was, well, his bike can do it, so my bike should be able to physically do it. So as long as I stay right behind him, I'm fine. I had one day went to the mountains with this guy and a few other dudes. I wrecked three times <laughs> in yes. one day. Yes. Oh my God! I had forgotten about that. Oh! The last time I wrecked. Oh my God! Thank God we were at the top of the mountain, because I had to roll the wow. bike down to get to an advanced auto parts so that I could buy duct tape and zip ties I remember and that get now. my Holy motorcycle fuck. put together enough for the limp home yeah. to Atlanta. Yeah. The the biggest thing I would say to myself is, look, if you want to go to the mountains 30 days after you start riding, that's fine. Do it to it. But for the love of God, the second that you go outside of your comfort zone, because otherwise you're not going to grow. Yeah. But, dude, if you're outside of your comfort zone, you have to realize you are the most vulnerable right now. If you go out of it, go out of it a little bit. You can go outside of your com- – this is something important for people that are either new to riding or learning to ride. You can go outside of your comfort zone, but you should be very aware of your limitations because your limitations and your comfort zone are not mutually exclusive. So that's a good point. So you just, know what I mean? Like, Because yes. you, you can ride outside of where you're comfortable but not where you're out of control. Well, so uh, to, the, to a point that I was saying uh, – I saw somebody and saw what the bike can do. And yes, the person that I, I can't remember, I can barely see the chat. Um, somebody said your bike could do it at that yeah. time. You're right. My bike could do it. 
the the speed at which you can ride a motorcycle has so little to do with the motorcycle. Yeah. It has so much to do <laughs> with you as the, the rider. The dual sport guys up in the mountains. Yeah. So you know like, I mean? just please keep in mind, guys, yeah. if you're if you're new to riding or maybe you're just getting into technical riding with people, it does not matter jack shit what the people you're seeing are riding it, is very it matters important what they have up here yeah. what they ha- what the the ability they have in their hand and how they move their body on the bike that has everything to do with it so just if you're going to go outside of your comfort zone go a little bit do learn not try your limitations learn your limitations if you want to push them fine but be prepared to wreck three times in a day on the mountains God, and limp yourself home I have fun with that all right so um we got five minutes next next uh regret no, you got have. 15 minutes five minutes before oh, we have to get for ours for our stuff i mean i mean honestly those are the big ones right R- giving up dirt uh, like i want to i want to go take the dirt course yeah like that that's a th- that's legitimately a thing we've talked about it internally like how fun it would be and make a great video right but well, it's so like I have a regret too that kind of goes with that because yeah. I would love to do a dirt course too because it I feel like so a lot would translate. Which is so fucking weird because you've spent so much time on a WR and you like you put around on on like loose gravel, <laughs> like yeah, and like packed dirt and I'm Cause like I, just because I don't understand and it's it, like, it's so different. When I see it, I'm just like that makes no fucking sense to me. Well, so here's here's another thing that kind of goes dual with sport that doesn't duel, <laughs> doesn't I only single only sports. I, I single sport <laughs> sports. Um, another thing I I wrote down is I've been riding for over ten years. And all I have taken is the MSF course. I have never taken an advanced rider course. I I have wanted to do technical riding from the get go. Yet I have done I'm no to. advanced rider course. I'm afraid to. Really? Did you see Doodle? She went back and took the advanced rider course after after having passed it and all this stuff. No, I haven't. And seen it was that. just like it was like you get so used to doing things your, your way, way. Oh Jesus! That like. When, Dude, I'd fail. I <laughs> know, uh, like I would legitimately fail so many parts because, like, a lot of the stuff I do is pure convenience. Like, float, yeah, floating my brake. Uh, I bet we're. Ter- I bet if you, if if a uh, MSF U-turns? person watched us, bro, we'd be so terrible. U turns, like I can do an okay U turn. I can't do that that little box. I I guarantee you. And then to do it on your own bike, like my bike, yeah, there's no fucking way. So here's something I've noticed. Uh. On the MT-07, I think if I was to go do an MSF course, what? I want you to read Jake's comment. <laughs> Oof. Uh, GG, Jake. GG. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, if I was to go do the MSF course, I'm sure I'd fail, bro. I feel like I could probably pass it on the MT07, but sadly, I think if I did it on the MT10, I would I would drop that bitch a hundred percent. I feel you like the MT07, okay the, the WR, but like yeah, the yeah the WR or the MT07, bro, I'd kill it. Yeah. But if I was on anything I, more, I, when we were over on, at the church parking lot, I was really surprised at how I could manhandle that that the MT07. It's a such a good bike, like. That we basic, it's like basically a two two lane. You've got the two mm-hmm. lanes in between the parking spot, and I was yeah. like, "Let's see what I can do." So I I, I, I channel my inner Dan Dan, mm-hmm. and I go, "Boop!" And I was like super tight, one and a half of the lanes. I was like, "Okay." Yeah, no, the, the <laughs> it's a cheap bike for real, honestly. Yeah, um, that's why I personally think it's the best motorcycle of twenty twenty one. Um, okay, so what else do I have on here? Oh, um. I'm just gonna pretend the door didn't make a weird noise. Yeah, well, here's the fucked up part, bud. What did you say before we started streaming? I said I don't want us to get robbed while we're streaming, and I locked the front door. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and, guys. We had a slight issue the other day with people trying to come into the shop, so we're a little sketched out. And Bo just shut the door, so I'm worried. Uh, so, uh, here's another thing. I wish I did more track days. Dude, I'm so sketched right now. Uh, you guys know I like technical writing, and uh, something that... He's talking with somebody. Oh, fuck. Dude, did somebody just try to come into the shop? Okay, he's talking with somebody. I'm going to continue on. Oh, somebody's waving. 
waving hands and shit. Oh shit, guys. I don't know what's happening right now. Oh, somebody's like pointing at him. I might have to go out there. Oh no, Bo doesn't seem mad. Maybe he's asking for directions. Let's hope to God. Yeah, there's... Hold on. Hold on. Guys, I know we're running out of time. This is not a good time for this, but hold it. I, I'm, let, me, let me just be ready in case something happens. This is a motorcycle podcast, and I, I'm so sorry this is happening. Oh, shit. Okay. I think everything's okay. He's locking the door. Everything's fine. Everything okay? Like, bro, he just I felt like he was trying to beat the door in. Okay, we, what? You, I, I, I've been given. I tried to tell people that I wanted to do more track days, and I failed because okay. I. What happened? What was that? Here. <laughs> some fucking asshole trying to sell some shit, but he's fucking beating the down down the door like he was gonna try to break it. So a guy trying to sell a security <laughs> thing yes. tried to break our door down. <laughs> yes. The irony is I told, so hard. I told him to just talk to the owner, dude. I'm talking, what do I look like? Bro, so I'm over here. Like All I could see it was a hand. Look, the only thing I could see over your head was a guy's hand do like this and point down. And I'm like, we've been in here the whole time. Nothing could have happened. Yeah. Okay, so everything's good. Okay. Whew. Anyway, um, I wish I did more track days. That's kind of one of the last things I didn't really say. Um, also... I don't know how much the R6, uh, riding an R6 for five years hurt my back, but I have a hard time riding super sports for yeah. long periods of time. Until that FZ was painful, too. Um, okay, so now that we have nine minutes left, yeah. how about this? I'll read over some of the... Uh, there is a no soliciting sticker. There is. Jake, it says by appointment only. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, I'm going to read through... If you go to my screen for the Milanote thing, can, I'll read over some I, of the stuff. I just, can I just say my favorite one? Favorite one that I saw of the community regard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to my screen. Uh, we can show it. Do you know the name? I'm gonna have you just guess which one I want to read. Just, just scroll through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A tank replied to your message. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, I'm assuming it's the tank. <laughs> Um, okay, so guys, I'm going to read through a couple of these, <laughs> including the tank one. Um, and uh, you go on Discord, find a uh, find a regret, and then we'll, we'll do that. Okay, so uh, my first bike, a chopped, customized 80s Suzuki Savage with a single-cylinder 650. Jesus. Needed work when I bought it. I spent months getting it road-ready, which I had no experience doing. I'd fix one problem within a day or two. Something else would go wrong. I finally gave up and brought it to the shop. By the end of it all, I got maybe two months of riding under my belt before something went haywire with the electronics and things got fried. I parked it in my garage and haven't looked at it in months because I bought it, bought a new bike out of frustration. Moral of the story is don't buy someone else's project bike as your first bike. Mm. Enormous little things. It sounds like you took on enormous little things. Uh, wow. Okay. So don't buy somebody else's project bike as a first bike. Yeah. I say this, I think, in the R6 or R7 as a first bike video. Buy a bike that's in full running order. Don't buy a project bike as your first bike. I mean, unless you unless you are are that kind of person. Unless you're Brian. You're like you're <laughs> not going you're good you're gonna be finding other people's fuck ups right. forever. All right, next one, uh Martin Johannesson. Johann oh that's Johansson. a cool last name. I was too eager to get going when I got my motorcycle Johansson? license. Huh? Johansson? I like Johansson. Yeah. Maybe he's a Viking. Uh, I was too eager to get going when I got my motorcycle license that I purchased a motorcycle solely based on looks. In retrospect, I should have taken the time to test ride multiple motorcycles to find out which one suits my style and my type of riding better and then make my purchasing decision. Kind of similar to you. Same shirt, bud. Same shirt. Yeah. Johannesson. <laughs> Johannesson. 
Okay, uh, next up, MTO9 Madness. Uh, my regret would be that I didn't start. There you go. Didn't start sooner. I was 26 when I got my first bike. Wish I was one of those uh, kids born. To, <laughs> yeah, right. Those kids that are born, they Bro, like the parents put them on 50s just instantly. Live and breathe dirt bikes. Oh my and race gosh, bikes. Uh, that would be cool. So yeah, he wanted to start earlier. Uh, the tank says riding. <laughs> Regret riding through Desert Storm on tracks with four people instead of me. Okay, I'm glad to, glad that tank responded. Um, <laughs> I wish I I wish I wish I could give that person the win. <laughs> right. Uh, so Chase, it's kind of too blurry to read. Uh, getting too comfortable wrecked my favorite bike because of it. Yeah, getting too comfortable. I think that kind of goes with what me and you were saying, where mm -hmm. you get a bike, you get it fits you really well, and you start getting really comfortable with it, and you just kind of you know, details go out the window. Next thing you know, you find yourself in a bad spot. Yep. Um, this person's, I think this person's name is Trey. I kind of regret buying my first slash current bike. Oh, wow. So he's relatively new at riding, it sounds. Um, it definitely wasn't the ideal first bike CC-wise. Looking back, I should have gotten a smaller because after three years with my bike, I find myself riding my girlfriend's bike more. Some days I... Love winding out that little 250 way more than my own bike. Not to mention, it's so much easier moving it around the garage. Um, there you go. So similar like, to what I said. I, this is what I said. I've said millions of times. It is so much more fun to ring the shit out of a small little bike. What's the statement? It's fast. It's funner to ride a slow bike fast than a fast bike slow. Yeah, you almost said that. Uh, yeah, that's. I mean, that's, it, that's pretty damn that's good for me. The, that's, that's almost, almost the, the same. Saying, yeah. Um. Yeah, guys, please do not discount low CC bikes. They are so good right now. I love that 125. Um, Josh says, starting out on a 250, I, I was made fun of by everyone. I don't necessarily regret it because I do believe it made me the rider I am today. I've never told anyone about it, but being made fun of was really discouraging. Yeah. I mean, I get that. I just want... I just wanted to be on a bike and feel the wind in my face. This has been 13 years, and I still think about it often. So this is this is something I want to. I picked this one specifically. Stop fucking bullying people because of the bike they ride. Let people enjoy what they want. Bro, also, I, it, you don't get to tell. Like he might be having the fucking time of his life. Who are you to tell them? That it's bullshit that he's on a 250. He could I, be on I, a 150. I could honestly do an entire show on the. Uh, the I anger, hate that the, so the much because you're pushing those anger. people away. Yeah, they, these are somebody like. Well, yeah. there was a there was a couple of stories I saw where it's like, yeah, I stopped riding because of that because like because I guess people are making fun of. Yeah, them? like I like okay, I shit on the Iron 83, but if a dude shows up on an Iron 83, you're not gonna shit on the guy, right? I'm gonna be like, yo, your bike's. Shitty, whatever, dude. But come on, let's fucking ride. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I'm gonna smoke you, but we can ride. I feel like I'm gonna get to grab the last one. Um, I feel like, and these aren't the these aren't the only ones, guys. We just picked out a couple of them that we thought Ooh. would work well. Uh, I feel like a lot of rider, a lot of people's regrets, whether they say so or not, is that they chose the cool factor over having fun. Uh, I've seen so many people now bullied and made fun of because of they had a smaller bike and because of the power. Naturally, that's where people started, and rightfully so. And I feel that it alters your mindset where you aren't too cool, quotes, cool, uh, so you have to get a bigger bike and focus on social status and forget what riding's all about, which is having fun. At the end of the day, if you're not having fun, is it even worth it? Um, yeah, the sim similar sentiment, man. Like, these... I would. I, I'm not. I, I don't have time to get into it. Yeah. Small bikes, especially right now, yeah. are so good, dude. The R3 is like one. If, if so, there's so many bikes right now that if they existed when I first started riding street, like that's clearly what I've. Have I, I not been said on. this? Yeah. If the R3 was available when I started riding, that's would be on. It, it wouldn't even be a thought. The price, the reliability, the looks. and the look, sh just. Take my money. Yeah. I'll be fine. That's a hat trick, man. <laughs> oh my God. I see uh, but but still, I see a lot of comments yeah. about people like, oh, I outgrew the R3. It's yeah, like dude, if you outgrew an R3, you better be a say it hell about, of a rider. People say it about my bolt all the time. But like stoplight to stoplight, I'm having just as much fun as you. Also, what does it fucking matter? Right? Like that's that's the thing. Is like 
I'm having fun doing the thing that I'm doing. Bro, we need to do, we need to do a whole off show. My fucking nuts. Let we me need to enjoy. do a whole show about like, bikes like the that. works. You love the shit out of your eight eight three. I love that you love it. I don't like the bike, but I love that you love it. And so ride the fuck out of it. And when you and if you ever if, I, if you ever for some reason can ride together, dude. I'm gonna be right there, right next to you. This in all my just, shitty little. This all comes down bike. to the, the <laughs> most important quote that matter, matters for everything with riding: ride your ride, enjoy your ride. Yep. Like, fuck the other guys, fuck yeah. anybody else that like doesn't think you're on a faster bike. Like, it, nobody fucking matters but you. If you are having a good time, who the fuck cares? Absolutely, dude. You know, it's it's so frustrating. You and, do you, boo. And like you said, like how many riders <laughs> yeah. end up leaving because like, oh, I, I, I maybe I can't fucking afford it. We've seen you know it happen saying? with the ATL rider crew, like all that stuff, all yeah. that drama that happened years ago, people stopped riding because of it. Yeah, I don't get it. Um all right, so we got we got we got a um We have no time left, Bo. Well, we, I, we, I can we, choose one person. You can? Yeah. And okay. they've and they've gotten a uh, some upvotes in the form of chase faces. Good mans. Um, Good mans. I said yeah, that. All oh, of you, well. all mans. Uh, it is. <laughs> he said this was my regret, and it's just a picture of his f- fucked up six three six. And bud, <laughs> I, uh, hold on, go off my screen real quick, and I'll open in Discord. He, um, uh, I see. We all know those feels too well. He posted a photo with it too. Yeah. Oh, good for him. I'll, I'll share the photo. <laughs> we'll sh- we'll yeah. live his regret together real quick, guys. One second. Because I've had a, I've had a couple of offs. The worst of which was um, the seventy five, where the person pulled out in the HOV lane on me. Uh huh. Um, and then another one where a guy pulled out of a neighborhood and my. Uh, Thankfully, I moved my foot out of the way. My foot peg dug into their bumper, and it, and it kind of like twisted my my shiz around. Up, 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 up. Just keep going. It's the only one with react. There you go. Yikes. Yeah. Here. Well, I'll. Uh, yeah, I'll we can go to my. I'll show the screen. So, guys, uh, R.I.P. in the chat for this awesome looking six three six. And we all know those feels. We here. do know those feels, man. We are right here with you. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, uh, who who posted that? That is Freddie Rods. Freddie Rod. Uh, Bo will get in contact with you, and you'll get your five fifty dollar rims. <laughs> like, Not a five. About to be. No, I thought I was about to go five hundred. <laughs> so I'm glad. I'm glad I, I stopped myself. Um. Yeah, so Freddie, we we totally get you, man. You are not the only one. Uh, everybody, it, it, it's kind of an unfortunate situation, but it's not about when you'll go down, or it's not about if you'll go down. It's about when. Uh, we all go down at some point in time, whether it's some stupid parking lot stuff, or if you're riding too far out your comfort zone, you hit some gravel, and then your motorcycle's head gets ripped off. Is it sticking back there? Yeah, you guys can see it in the camera right there. That's Holly. That's, What's left with her? That's one of my R6's heads right there. Oh. Uh, so, guys, that's a, that was a cool show. That felt good. I like these kind of like conversationally things. Yeah. I, like, I, will, I will say I like the mix. You guys in the chat, let us know. Do y'all like these kind of conversationally uh, podcasts, or do you like them as – Newsy. Newsy, because I, I like covering it, covering yeah. the gamut, because it kind of makes it interesting for us. Yeah. Um, but, guys, that's going to be the end of Live on Two Wheels this week. Uh, next week, we're going to be back here Thursday. We're here every Thursday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Unless Time. Unless it's a Friday. <laughs> Unless Chase is in L.A. riding Harleys. Um, that's not going to happen very often, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you're still watching, guys, well, please make sure to hit the like button. You never know. Hit the well, like button if you want to see Chase on Harleys, and even if you don't. Uh, but, guys, thanks for hanging out with us live here. If you're just listening to us, thanks for listening to us uh, over on the podcast side. And if you're watching us on YouTube, you can like it as well. We uh, appreciate all of them. Also, you guys are freaking champs. The uh, yeah. Granted, the this live show, the numbers are, are lower than our like main videos, which is totally normal. But on the podcast side... We are seeing growth every single week. There's also a lot of conversation happening on on these on the YouTube. This side is too. that is my literal like if the views were terrible, the amount of conversations we get to have with you guys makes yeah. doing this show totally worth it. And uh, I mean, it's something me and Bo really looked forward to at the end of the week. So right. uh, we hope you guys. <laughs> it means have, we don't have to take time out of our day to like do other stuff, and we get to just like, I know be dudes. It's like hey, for the last two hours on Thursdays, just fuck, you know, just, just I mean, go we, hang out we, with the people. We used to do shit like this all the time, but then it's like now we have to like worry about you know like oh well, well yeah, we have to business. We're it. at work. <laughs> yeah, which is all, I mean, 
it's it's work, but it's you know we we make YouTube videos on motorcycles. <laughs> it could be worse. We work harder than I've ever worked before. Yeah, we do. That's hundred percent true. Story. We love every one of you guys. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Uh, thanks for for propping the show up. We can't wait to keep making more, and uh, we're on the way to number two. One day we'll make it there. We haven't. We, we should we have, have number one on here, and that may like, help us be number, number two. two. That would be. I'll have to get in no you should, contact. You should make it a point to always bring that up at every chance you get uh-huh. during that podcast. <laughs> I should no. I should do the Revzella affiliate link plug, and part of that plug is the. Also, that's the home of the number one podcast. So you guys go watch the number one podcast and uh, let them know number two's looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll just send all of our people to be like, "Hey, you guys should be on. Uh, you guys should be on live on two wheels." <laughs> we we would need to figure out how to get um, Spurge and Zach so we can have a four block. And I'm gonna look at you. We could just for in, we just gonna invite them out here so we can go riding down the mountain. Oh, in person. Yeah, bro. Oh, you're that's talking good. next level some stuff. We'll okay, uh, that's how else you get the number two. That's true. You I'll, don't I'll step send up the uh, game. I don't know Zach, but I know uh, I know Spurge. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll send him a I'll send him a message. Let's do it. All right, guys, uh, that's it for this week. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. And until then, you guys, please, please, for the love of God, ride safe and ride your own damn ride. Yes, sir. That'd be funny if we ended it on that. Oh wait, we already ended on something. You guys know what's <laughs> up. There it is. All right, guys, that's live on two wheels this week. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Later. Later.